In a mountain of mendacity, the president really outdid himself today. Just a day after the president disrespected his intel chiefs as passive and naive, that they had to go back to school, that they're going to be proven wrong, he met with two of them today. CIA head Gina Haspel and Director of National Intelligence Dan Coats met in the Oval Office. See the picture. When the president came out of it, I want you to hear how he explained away the public contradictions that we heard from them earlier this week. They uh, said that they were totally misquoted and they were totally, uh, it was taken out of context. So what I do is I'd suggest that you call them. Uh, they said it was fake news. Fake news? That's what the president claims they said. Their testimonies were televised. Their written assessments were public. I mean, come on. And that was only hours after saying that time would prove him right and then wrong. And then suddenly he says they're all in agreement. It is mind-bending mendacity, but also dangerous, says Jim Clapper, former National Intelligence Director. Good to have you with me, sir. Thanks, Chris. First, the easy question. Percent chance that Coates and Haspel would say what they were quoted as saying is fake news? Uh, about zero. Right? Why well, would they say that when they know it was from live testimony? Well, they wouldn't say it because, for the very reason you cite, because they were on television for all to see uh, what, they, uh, what they said and did. Uh, and not, buttressed by, by the way, the unclassified uh, written assessment that uh, was submitted to, to the committee. So what bothers you about this? We're, it's not new for us to have to expose the president of the United States for lying. I don't think he's ever told a bigger whopper than this one because it's so obviously untrue and it compromises these two people who really need to have their integrity intact because of the nature of their work. So your concern is? Well, on a number of levels, Chris. First, just let, let me make a, a, an overarching comment here is that policymakers to include policymaker number one, that is the president, always have the prerogative of accepting, rejecting, or ignoring intelligence. They can do that. Uh, I think if they do it repetitively over time for multiple issues, they imperil the, the nation and, uh, and, and the presidency in this, in this case. So that, that's kind of concern number one. I'm reminded of the old saw about God loves drunk babies in the United States of America. And we've been singularly blessed in that we haven't had a major international confrontation uh, in the last few years, particularly the last two during this administration. And I'm meaning something of the magnitude, God forbid, right. of a 9-11 attack God or a nuclear confrontation with the likes of Russia or China. In a situation like that, the president is going to need uh, his intelligence community and his gut will not be sufficient to sort out what's fact and what isn't. So. You need trust in a, in a situation like that, and that trust has to go b uh, both ways. And so what's been compromised here, in my view, is first, in the eyes of the public, the trust that the public has in the intelligence community, the trust of, and what this has done to the employees, the rank and file across the intelligence community, when they see three leaders like this, particularly Dan Coates, insulted as they were, and by the way, Dan, maybe that was perhaps one of his finest hours because he forthrightly and honestly and straightforwardly told the committee and the public what the facts were about intelligence threats around the world. And, and then, of course, you have to wonder about what do our foreign partners think, mm -hmm. particularly those who share intelligence with us. And then I worry about the leaders themselves who, who are going, you know, could easily reach the point where, hey, I don't need this aggravation and I'm out of here, which would be a huge loss in all three of those cases. So on a number of levels, this is very disturbing. And of course, most people wait years to do revisionist history. Uh, President Trump, you know, does it the next day. And this is a manifestation of his living in a no-fact zone reality bubble all to himself. Right. I'm going to make an argument uh, at the end of the show, as I do every night, about how I am really impressed uh, by his lie today. And I believe that it is a window into his future in terms of what this Mueller probe is going to reveal. It's not about crimes. It's about credibility. Let me ask you something. The blocked numbers, I'm happy it leaked. I'm happy it came out because the suggestion was the block numbers were the president. People were using it as a potential smoking gun. It was on TV all the time with pundits yeah. uh, getting ready to cash in on it. They were wrong. It wasn't the president. However, 
Now, we expect Don Jr. to jump up and down, uh, but for people to say, well, that ends that, doesn't end it for me. Does it end it for you? No, it doesn't. I mean, uh, frankly, Chris, for me, this uh, uh, hyperventilating about those phone call, that phone call is uh, kind of uh, uh, a little overwrought, in my opinion. Uh, and the fact that it apparently wasn't to uh, uh, the president uh, or the candidate at the time, um, you know, I, I don't think it, it has that much bearing on right. Well, just because it wasn't the him overarching doesn't mean he didn't know. Is, was the was the president aware right. of the meeting, whether he heard about it via this phone call or not? And you know, what what is his complicity here? Mm -hmm. That to me is 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 a much bigger issue. Uh, yeah. And who who the other communicant was in the phone calls of lesser importance, at right. least in I my mean, mind. You know, I could have done a little bit more digging and given the people the names uh, tonight, but I don't want to do that because I'm told they don't have anything to do with the probe, and right. why put any more people's lives in the mix on this to be judged on something that's not relevant um, to the probe overall? Jim Clapper, you are always relevant. Thank you so much for making us smarter on these issues tonight. Well, thank you, sir. Thanks, Chris, for having me.